Well, good morning all and welcome to the Off Grid Homestead and where today we are going to do a capacity test on one of my 48 volt batteries. Now, if you've been following my high DC ripple alarm video series, for the want for in other words, this is a continuation of that. So for the people who have been following those videos, what I've done is I've removed one of those batteries out of the system, leaving the other two because I still need to run the, the power in the cabin. And we're going to test one battery at a time. So I've got one battery out here and we're going to run some tests on it. So what I'll do is I'll show you how we're setting this up. So this is our setup. So we've got the 48 volt lithium battery hooked up here. And that's hooked up to the 5 kilowatts of this 5 kilowatt inverter. And then we're going to be running this electric heater, which is going to be our load. So we're going to monitor that by just this simple battery monitor. I think most of you that are following my channel know these battery monitors. I've used it in other videos before. So that's the battery monitor we're going to use. Once I've got the battery charged up, I'm going to reset that, of course. So this battery is pretty well full, but I do need to top it up just a bit. So what I'm doing is I've put up this uh, charge controller here, and that goes to some panels outside the front of the workshop we're only putting in 200 milliamps so that means the battery must be fully charged before when i was doing this earlier this morning i was putting in around about 2.8 amps to nearly 3 amps but now this has dropped down to 240 or 24 milliamps or whatever near yeah, 24 milliamps that means our battery in fact i'll be able to tell you because we'll look at our solar controller and yes we are on we are on the float mode. So this battery is fully charged. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to let it sit like this for about an hour, just so the cells can equalize a little bit and make sure it's all good. Then we're going to start our test. Right, so we have our solar controller turned off and unplugged off the battery. I have reset the uh, shunt meter here the battery monitor so we can monitor what we're doing so what we need to do is we hit the on switch here i have the fan all set up the heater all set up we hit the on switch we can get this to focus and that should now start allowing us to pull some power when it when it wants to start a few moments later so we are up and running now the inverter's turned on so we're drawing around about 26 amps out of the battery so we'll just let this run until the battery shuts down in fact what i'm anticipating that will happen which happens to pretty well all the time when i do these tests the inverter will generally shut off and low voltage disconnect before the battery bms shuts off and that's not a huge problem because by the time that's happened, the battery's got hardly any power left in it anyway. So it's pretty close to accurate even when the inverter's shut down. So that's where we're at. Now, I know there's going to be a few people saying that you have to do these tests at the C20 rating and 26 amps is not the C20 rating. Well, the difference between 20 amps and 26 amps on this battery on a lithium battery that has very low internal resistance, that extra six amps isn't going to make really any difference to whether we're gonna pull the full capacity or not. So anyway, we've started our test. Let's can come back to see how many amp hours can we pull out of this battery after three and a half years of daily cycling. One eternity later. Well, not quite one eternity later, but where we're at, if we have a look here, we can see we've taken 85 amp hour out of the battery and we're down to 48 volts. So a little bit lower voltage than what I was expecting. So we might not be able to pull the full capacity out of this battery, but let's wait and see. 12 seconds later. Right, so just shortly after I uh, filmed that bit, like literally... 30 seconds this turned off so this is shut down right so what i'm going to do is wake this battery back up again with the charge controller because usually a charge controller the victron charge controllers do wake up a lithium battery 
what I want to look at is as soon as this starts up what is the voltage of the battery there we go so our battery voltage is 49 volts into the battery so or well, that's what the battery volts is so that should be a lot lower so one of the cells looks like it is shutting or the BMS is shutting down because one of the cells is not uh, playing the game right there we go so we're starting to pull power from the battery now what I'm going to try and do is I'm going to disconnect the solar controller and we're going to see at what point the voltage does this battery shut down sorry for the shaky footage but I want to know what voltage the BMS shuts the battery off at there we go 47.7 volts Okay, so I've just woken the battery back up again, and yeah, I do use pre-charged resistor. I know a few people have asked me uh, whether I use pre-charged resistor. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hook the solar controller back up to it. I'm going to reset the meter here, and we're going to see how many amps I put back in to the battery. So the next thing we need to do is charge this back up again. So I've got the solar controller charging, which is only putting about 3 amps in. So I've also got the inverter charger here charging as well. So I've got it set to uh, 20 amps, so it's putting about 19 amps in through this charger. Now that is getting powered by the power at the cabin, which is coming off the Victron inverter. So we can see our cabin is drawing around about 1400 watts. So I don't want to charge any higher than that I'm going to start draining the batteries too much from the uh, inverter or from the batteries in the 48 volt system at the cabin so I've just got this rated to 20 I can go right up to 60 amps I don't want to go that high so we'll see how how much power we put back in and that's going to give us a little bit more of an indication of the battery's remaining capacity so there you have the battery capacity test on that battery a little bit disappointing that I've only down to 85% uh, of its capacity after three and a half years of cycling which is roughly 1500 cycles at I guess now the cycling I do with that is taking it down to 30% to 50% depth of discharge meaning there's seven between 70 and 50% remaining so on those figures we should well and truly get 5,000 cycles out of those batteries before we get to that 80% mark. So I don't think we're going to get near anywhere near that. Now my question is, we as consumers haven't had lithium batteries long enough to see if we get these 5,000 cycles claim that the lithium battery industry, or what want for another word, say that we'll get out of these. So I'm questioning whether the lithium batteries are going to cycle as much as they say that they are yes they cycle that in laboratory testing but we're in the real world where we've got our heat here in western australia is extremely hot in summer so in our climate in our real world are we going to get that so the question i've got that's still got six month warranty on that so i will be emailing the uh, company i've dealt with the company uh, before and they are absolutely sensational with their customer service. I can't speak highly enough for them. No, I'm not sponsored from them just for those people that are thinking that. So I'm going to email them, let them know the test results. I could claim a warranty, whether it's a pro rata or not. I'm not sure if I want to. Uh, considering what I do, I've been doing off grid power and batteries for 30 plus years. Look what's around me, look at all the equipment I've got and all the money that I've spent on batteries and solar over the years. I really want to whip the top of that off, test each and individual cells, see if there is a cell down, and uh, have a look at the construction and the inside of the battery. So by doing that, voids that last three months and six months of warranty, but I'm not overly worried too much about that. I know a few people will say, just send it back, but... I'm not, I'm not, I really want to know what's inside, and I know some of you do too. So anyway, there's the results of that. Once this battery's charged up, I will let you know how much I've put back in it. I'll do that in one of the shorts video. I've waffled on enough. Most of you have clicked off, so thank you for the people that have stayed to the end, and we'll see you in the next video here at the Off-Grid Homestead.